Hey guys, Ash here coming at you today with another Race Shadow Legends Champion Guide, this time on Harvest Jack. I like Harvest Jack. Uh, I'll tell you why in today's video, obviously, but first, a few shout outs to you guys. A lot of requests for good old Harvest Jack. We have Keho looking for Harvest Jack or Vogoth. Uh, we have Cyclonic. Shout out to Cle Keho again, Keho again, Keho. Oh, uh, wait, Jill. Shout out. Maurice, shout out. Militech, Duck Luck, and everybody else who keeps the Champion Guide requests coming every single day i really appreciate you guys and all the comments that you leave here and all the passion that you show for the game let's go ahead and take a look at harvest jack right now all right guys so harvest jack was a i believe he was a halloween champion way back in the day i want to say 2019 uh, i love him aesthetically right he's like well, he's a he's a jack o' lantern. He's he's really putting the jack in the harvest here. Uh, he also has notably. I can't do a harvest jack video and not point out that he has all the starting champions' skulls as a necklace. Now that is demented, and I absolutely love it. Really fits the Halloween vibe here, doesn't it? I mean, you could actually make a Raid Shadow Legends horror movie and use Harvest Jack as your, basically your protagonist or your, your antagonist, I guess, depending, right? Uh, but I like him. I, I really love this dude. Like, he's one of my favorite designs in the game, honestly, right? He's got the uh, the nine, ten eyeballs and the, and the, the pumpkin head. I, I love it. Anyway, his claim to fame, one of his claims to fame is he has a lot of base HP, almost 27,000. He doesn't have a lot of base defense, 925. His speed is pretty average to maybe, uh, no, I would say average at 102. Uh, a triple hitter, Harvest of Fear on his A1, attacks one enemy three times. Each hit has a 35% chance of stealing a random buff from the target. That's a really good start here because each hit with a 35% chance, odds are we're going to steal at least one buff from the target off of the A1 ability, and we'd love to see that triple hitter. Each hit also has a 35% chance to place a fear for one turn if the target has no active buffs. The chance increases to 100% if all buffs were stolen from the target, which is really nice. You can remove or steal a block debuffs and then place the fear, have a 100% chance of doing so if you stole it. It's a really nice A1 and harvest of fear. Dreams to Ash. I don't know what it is about this ability. I just I really like the name of it. Something in there. Uh, it's an AoE. Place a block bus for two turns on targets under fear. I hate the conditionality out of this ability. By the way, it is a three turn uh, if you book it all the way up. Removes increased attack from the target. Replaces them with a decrease attack. Removes continuous heals and places them with a poison for two turns. The number of poison debuffs is equal to the number of continuous heal buffs removed. This is an interesting one. Uh, I like... The ability, but I don't love Dreams to Ash. It's really annoying in the arena to go against because increased attack is still very popular. Obviously, every attack-based team is likely going to have an increased attack champion, maybe an Arbiter or somebody else kind of setting the table for them. So you can often come in with Harvest Jack and really mitigate the damage that their DPS is going to do against you in the arena. Uh, that, to me, is the best use case of this ability. The continuous heals are poison uh, or replacement or swap out is pretty good in wave-based content as well his a3 lord of terror is really his big money ability it's on a four turn cooldown when booked attacks all enemies a hundred percent chance of placing a true fear for one turn also plays a decreased speed for two turns and decreases each target's turn meter by 15 percent if the true de uh, fear debuff is placed has a 100% chance of placing a sleep debuff for one turn if the true fear is not placed so this ability, obviously, True Fear is great in, in champion versus champion context. In wave content, uh, Doom Tower Floors, for example, Cursed City, it's very good as well. In the arena, it's very good. He's not much of a boss killer, Harvest Jack, right? He does have the decreased speed and the sleep, but only if the True Fear is placed. So, well... That negates that against bosses. It'd almost be better of placing a decreased speed for two turns if the true fear is not placed. That way we could use it against bosses as well who will not be susceptible to true fear debuffs, right? So it's kind of unfortunate there. And then obviously sleep, if the true fear is not placed, well, sleep might be useful in some situations, but probably we're just going to have the true fear on them anyway, right? Provide the accuracy 
is there and whatnot. So it's a kind of a weird ability, but you add in the A2, the A3, he is really one word comes to mind on Harvest Jack, a disruptor. He's a disruptor in whatever your enemy team is doing. He's kind of doing the opposite, right? Continuous heals turn to poison, increase attack turns to decrease attack. He's stealing buffs. He's placing true fear. He's trying to mess with your opponent. And he's very good at that. His leering grin, which you're going to see proc like every time he takes a turn. It's, ins it's insane. When attacked, or every time he's attacked, excuse me, decrease the duration of all buffs on the attacker by one turn. Leary, leering grin, excuse me is really powerful. It's a, it's a really good ability, especially over time. You know, you'll see it again when we play him. It's surprisingly effective at just debuffing over time all of your opponents, right? So it's a really cool passive. Uh, you put that all together, what do we think of Harvest Jack based on his kit and his base stats alone? He's an HP-based champion as well. Uh, I actually haven't read the lore, but I kind of want to. Like, how did this dude become... Well, who was he before he was a Jack-O-Lantern? Uh, ba 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 I guess he was a, a children's story? I don't know. I'm not going to skim it. You guys can read it if you want to. Well, HailHades.com gives him a 3 out of 5. He's truly a tough champion to grade. Because when he's working, he's a 5 out of 5. Like, But he's very he's kind of niche. He's kind of a controller, arena controller, and a bolster set. So I can't really argue with this rating overall. You know, uh, He's not the most versatile champion in the game. Uh, he could be if they reworked, again, that A3 a little bit. I think he'd be an interesting champion to, not that he needs a buff, but he'd be a good champion to give a buff to. Turn that A3 into a three-turn cooldown, uh, or keep it as a four, but change the conditionality in the way that I kind of described, would give him a little bit more utility against bosses as well, right? Uh, that being said, though, he's very competent against, against Fire Knight. He has that triple hitter on his A1, so he can help you out there, can help you out get through the waves. I love this guy in a bolster set. We'll talk about why in a moment. Uh, well, basically his base HP. Uh, Frostbiter, I would say against Dark Fae, they give him a two out of five i would say that's a great area for him he can come in there and try to control the mirrored images of your champions on that first kind of attack against dark fey uh vis-a-vis -vis the true fear right so you just got to be careful because he could come back and do that to you as well right better to have a stunner on your team uh arena a four out of five i think that's a fair grading as well his multipliers again he's the hp based champion his a1 is a, a 0 0.06 triple hitter that's not a lot of damage Dreams to Ash is a 0.16 multiplier. That is also not a lot of damage. And then the Lord of Terror is 0.21. That's not bad, but still not great. So for a champion who has two AoEs, sorry, I have something in my eye. Uh, for a champion who has two AoEs, you're not getting a lot. Of, it's not an Eric's like HP based uh, nuker. Okay. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think Eric's has like close to his A3 multiplier on her A1, which is an AOE. Uh, that being said, he does have two AOEs, one on a three turn, one on a four turn when booked. Uh, triple hitter on the A1. You can build him for a little bit of support damage on your team. And I'm sure you won't be disappointed in the results. Let me show you how I have him built. I already alluded to it earlier. I have him uh, in, in, in a bolster set, man. I think that bolster and previous to bolster before I had access to it i just ran him in a shield you know wait whose kit is awesome gratz the new kale the new K oh he got galathir someone in my clan got galathir oh i'm gonna say so jealous uh gratz sorry guys sorry for the impromptu clan chat moment here uh I've opened over 300 Primal Shards. You can check it out on the channel. I haven't posted the video yet, so I'm not going to show you my champion index. But uh, yeah, got, uh, got a couple good ones. Didn't get Star Sage, though, unfortunately. Anyway, let's go back to Harvest Jack. You didn't hear me. You didn't click on this video, excuse me, to hear me talk about mythicals, right? Uh, Jack, where are you, Jack? There we go. So I have good old Harvest Jack, as I mentioned, in a bolster set. Bolster a shield. Why not? Why not? If you're ever going to find a champion to scale up the HP, you're looking at like a Mountain King, a Coronar, a Skull Lord, Vargal, uh, and Harvest Jack. I mean, he's one of the top HP-based champions in terms of his the scalability of 27,000 base HP. It's very nice. And obviously, the shield and the bolster set is going to be predicated, that shield, on the, the, the wearer's total HP. So uh, why not add some extra utility, scale up his HP, his HP-based damage dealer anyway, and throw him in a bolster. For the same reason, you could throw him in a mortal. You're not going to give the rest of your allies 
allies any benefits, uh, but you'll certainly help keep him healed up. And getting a 45% HP, if you're going to put three sets on him, is going to be very powerful as well. Those are my best sets, or those are my favorite sets, I should say. If you are, you know, solely using him in the arena, and you really want to disrupt the enemy team and go first with the true fear ability, the way to build him in that situation would be, in that situation only, would be in triple perception, super, super fast, super high accuracy. That's going to be your best bet. But for me, even in the arena... Oh, I like him in a bolster set personally with some, I like him in a set in a build like this, right? He's not going to have enough accuracy to land his debuffs on everybody, but you know, there's a reason we don't see a lot of Harvest Jack and Endgame Arena right now. It's because of Stone Skin and Polymorph and all the things, you know, Power Creep as well. Either way. I was able to get him to 117,000 HP. That's a really nice shield. And I was able to do it not even using like all my best gear or anything crazy like that. I still built him fairly fast at 247 speed. I put a little bit of crit rate on him. I didn't look for it, but if it had, if the gear had crit rate, I was like, okay, I'll go for it. A uh, little bit of, well, a lot of accuracy too. 448 is good, uh, but in the arena, no amount of accuracy is too much accuracy as a general rule of thumb. Uh, speaking of which, obviously on the banner, we are going to go with accuracy. All right, guys, I apologize. I had to make a little adjustment. I don't know how it got there, but I had an attack banner on him. Attack banner is not going to do anything for good old Harvest Jack. So we put an accuracy banner. Uh, we, we, for, we, I think we lost like what, one or two speed, a few speed, 10, five, I don't know. Uh, but we picked up a lot of accuracy. So now he's feeling a lot better at 500 plus accuracy. We went accuracy on the reaction banner. I do have HP on the amulet. You can go crit damage as well. You might argue crit damage might be the way to go in the build that we have since we already have a decent amount of crit rate on our, on our, you know, substack that's on our gear uh that being said though I'm, I'm first and foremost just concerned with getting a really really nice juicy shield and enough accuracy on this champion we have speed in the boots we have hp percentage and hp percentage right and I kind of lied actually earlier. I said I didn't have great gear on him, but I do have 80% HP on both the gauntlets and the chest and the perception gear there. Uh, and again, the bolster is not too bad either what I have here. Some of it better than others, I would say, right? Uh, but obviously stat priorities, speed, accuracy, HP. Speed, accuracy, HP on this champion. I have uh, masteries. I went down and I picked up Eagle Eye. This is kind of an arena mastery build. Uh, you can absolutely go down the offensive track you know what i'll just show you the offensive tree the way that i would build him that way as well in case you guys want to go ahead and obviously choose whatever works best for the build that you're trying to get out of him so i'm going to go with pinpoint accuracy charge focus and swarm smiter to start things off uh he has so many debuffs that it's hard not to go for arcane celerity as well right a chance of improving his turn meter every single time a debuff is removed or expires and again he's bringing like I don't know, five debuffs to the table. Might as well take advantage. We do have one basic set on him, so I will pick up Lore of Steel. Uh, I want to come down. I want to pick up Master Hexer. I would still like to come down and pick up Eagle Eye and PvP, but in PvE, which I will switch to right now just to show you both, I'll go crit rate, I'll go crit damage, I'll basically come around uh, the, the left-hand side of the offensive tree, and then I'll kind of, uh, you know, uh, nudge my way, excuse me, to Giant Slayer from there. Uh, so I'll go single out. This is going to be helpful, too, in PvE situations, just to get a little bit of damage from this dude, uh, which is nice. From, uh, from a debuffer, I like to have, you know... I like to have a little bit of damage as well. Uh, so he's bringing something other than just his debuffs to the table. He's quite a unique champ, though. All the fears and the true fears and all that stuff. Does he have anything that I, I really need Sniper for is the question. I don't think he does. He's got the block debuffs. Everything's pretty much 100%, right? When booked, when booked. He does have the... Uh, okay. He could use it on the A1, so we will pick up Sniper as well. I went with Intimidating Presence as a blessing on this champion. Um, I feel like that's a, a fine route to go on him, uh, but I think the best two were probably going to be in the Arena Polymorph, obviously. Uh, and outside the arena, you definitely want to go with uh, with Brimstone, right? So I think far and away, those are going to be the ways to go. I think I should probably just switch that as well while we're at it, right? So on the left-hand side, I did come down here and I went with uh, Giant Slayer. 
We're going to go bring it, uh, Heart of Glory, excuse me, as well. So there we go. This is going to be the, uh, the the PVE Masteries of Choice. We'll leave it at this. But of course, you could come down and go Eagle Eye, even in this build as well. It's nice to have Defensive Tree for the arena so we can counterattack with Retribution and Deterrence, getting those triple hits. But more importantly, getting back to that A1 to steal more buffs from the, the enemies and potentially CC them. He's a very, very powerful champion. Regarding any counterattack, ally attack, or, or counterattack masteries, right? So consider that even a retribution set or something like that on this champion would be worth considering to fill out a two piece. Anyway, uh, let's go. Let's go polymorph. What the heck, right? Again, if I was going to lean more towards the arena, I would go polymorph. If I was going to lean, lean more towards PvE, I would go brimstone. So we have a little bit of a cross here uh, in terms of the ways that we're building this champion. A little bit of both here, right? So 241, 87, 94 are going to be the end stats with 465 accuracy. Let's go ahead and uh, let's start out. Let's just throw him in a wave, right? In a Doom Tower wave. And then we'll take him into the arena after that. Uh, I kind of assembled this fun all fear synergy type team. Actually, I actually have Queen Ava on it too because I want to do a test on her before and after buff. You can check that out on the main channel. I'll probably do a guide on her soon too here after her buff, but I wanted to do a damage check. This is her damage now, and this is her damage after the buff, and I'll release those at the same time. So check me out on Ash Raid Shadow Legends, and you can see that content. But Yoshi the Drunker is going to come in here and start by applying True Fear. We have Noble. That's right, Noble on the team, as well as Queen Ava. We come in with Harvest Jack. He comes in there and basically, well, <laughs> continues to lock everybody down, right? This is fun because you don't really see that many Fear, True Fear type teams like this. Uh, I could also add, I could take out like a Vlad the Nightborn and add a Fortis uh, to this team. Or I could take out a uh, a Queen Ava if I wanted to. Uh, but I am a big fan of having Vlad the Nightborn on the squad. And Noble is surprisingly, as you guys will see, an insanely good damage dealer considering he's one of the worst uh, legendary champions in the game or widely considered to be. I have this new series on my main channel which I'm basically defending the worst champions in the game and you can rest assured the, the five of you still watching this video right now, he will be the next well not the next one, Pixel will be the next uh, Drockle the Gaunt was the first he will be Noble will be after Pixel. Uh look at that damage though, Noble I mean Man, it's not meant to be a noble spotlight, but golly, that was insane, right? Doubles up uh, Queen Ava. Harvest Jack not dealing much in the way of damage, obviously getting a little Giant Slayer, and that was basically it. But even with the crit rate that we have on him, even with Giant Slayer, this is why we're not really building Harvest Jack for damage. Now, granted, if we did have Brimstone, probably get up to 100,000 or so, you know, uh, but... I'm not looking for damage out of Harvest Jack. I'm looking for all-out control, and he did a great job. It's not going to come up on the stat sheet, right? But there's an idea of a fun, true fear, fear synergy team with Yoshi, Noble, and Harvest Jack on the squad. Uh, let's go into the arena. I think this guy is a great arena option for people who are just, like, you're not trying to push to top 100 plat at the end of the season or whatever, but if you're trying to build an unorthodox team, maybe a fear team, right? Maybe you're just trying to do something a little bit outside the box and not going with the same champions everybody else goes with on every single team. Uh, Harvest Jack is actually a very adequate fit. What, Rosin, what are, you, what, are you, what are you doing, man? Get out of my video. Uh, he's a great fit. Like he's he's not He's annoying. He's a nuisance to deal with. Let's go ahead and use, who cares, right? Let's use this squad. Why not? Noble, it's your day to shine alongside Harvest Jack. Noble's cool because he has fear and true fear as well, and he's ignoring defense and all that stuff and doing more damage based on fears and true fears. So they do synergize really well together. Uh, I'm just imagining this dude looking at his, at his arena defense log and being like, wait, what is this team? <laughs> all right. Uh, I don't even need to use the sheep right now. We're going to set the table nicely uh, for everybody, even including Harvest Jack. We can't benefit from the increased attack, but we can certainly benefit from the increased accuracy thanks to Yoshi the Drunkard. We're going to come in, and this is the A3 of Noble. Does pretty good damage, right? Not too bad. He gets an extra turn, so he goes right in with the A2. Going to take out the Reviver. We haven't even done anything yet. So we can put the block buffs on anybody under fear. Well, they're under fear. Uh, but we don't really have anything to worry about buffs-wise, so we might as well come in with the A3. 
Lord of Terror. He's also very good to use. Again, you're not going to see crazy damage or anything out of him, but obviously he's responsible for the bolster set as well. Uh, the cool thing about him is, is you can use him as an anti-stone skin. Try to steal the stone skin off the A1. Uh, let's try to do that, right? You can also use him against any time that you see Ultimate Death Knight. Or, like, here's a UDK team right here. They look pretty tough, I'm not going to lie, but let's go for it. Uh, Taurus and Reach Guy, I mean, what are you, what are you going to do, right? What are you going to do? Uh, but you can go after, because we're Spirit Affinity going after Force Affinity, anytime you're going against a tanky Force Affinity team, I'm talking champions like a Harima out there, you can run a Harvest Jack in those situations. You could use him in the arena situationally, depending on, you know, Pythons. He's very good in those situations, right? Force Affinity, tanky, Wither the Crowns type situations. Let's go in here again, land a couple uh, stuns. Okay, we have no choice but to sheep UDK, but let's see what we can do here. Come in. So we have the 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 Tara sphere right now. Uh, let's go in on a little bit of nukage. Noble gets one shot. Oh, we don't have a reviver on this team, huh? That's what we're missing, huh? Let's just a one in. <laughs> All right, we're basically toast here. <laughs> this is the only downside to a Yoshi the Drunkard, right? Good control. We did go first, but we went against two stone skins, and what are you going to do, right? We have no more damage left on the team, and poor uh, poor Harvest Jack didn't even get a chance to do his take his turn. He lost it to the Taurus Fear. Now, that is a, a guy I should have in any Fear or True Fear team, right? Taurus, with his annoying fear at the beginning of a turn. Uh, okay, let's find another UDK team that I can actually maybe beat. Uh, this, one's, this one is also intimidating and looks... Hard as hell, but let's try it, right? You can't say that we're cherry-picking the good teams, except for the first team that we faced, obviously. Or cherry-picking the bad teams, I should say. We're going against the good ones, at least, right? Trying to show you some use case. So it's going to depend on the situation here with this squad. If they have, you know, how many stone skins do they have here? Just one? Okay, that's cool. Let's go in. We've got to keep in mind that good old uh, White Queen is going to be stealing some of these. Uh... <sighs> Well, I have to. I have to sheep UDK, right? Maybe I shouldn't run, be running Armands on the squad because it's defeating some of the the buff steal off the A1. Either way, let's see if we can go ahead and take this team down, right? So far, so good. Let's go in and put the true fear on White King, or try to. Uh, let's try to kill UDK. We do. She cleanses instead of revives. Interesting. I want to keep reducing the turn meter on White King because he can... Things are going, like, okay right now, but all it takes is one turn from him, and my whole team is toast. Uh, we're going to go in A1 here and try to steal some of this stuff. Resisted, resisted, steal buff. So we did steal one buff at least. Not necessarily the buff that we wanted and strengthened, right? <laughs> but we, hey, we got one. Let's go in with a little bit of nukage. They do have, I'm very aware that they, the enemy team here has uh, unkillable up right now, but it doesn't matter. White King takes a turn and we're toast, so we have to go for him. Let's go in for our next trick, remove all buffs. Now we're cooking again. Oh my God. Am I going to take down? It always feels, I don't care. I mean, I have Armands on my squad, so I'm not trying to overstate it. A1, not bad with a Giant Slayer damage, you know? Uh, but it always feels good to take down a super meta team with an unorthodox off meta team, like Noble. Picture this guy checking your battle log, right? Wait, Yoshi the Drunkard. Wait, Noble? Wait, Harvest Jack? That's the team that just beat me? Yes, it is. That is the team that just beat you. Listen, guys, I'll be real with you. We didn't see much, right, out of him in the arena, we did see the bolster set. Let's try one more. You know, that was a super tanky, annoying team. Uh, but we did a pretty good job controlling it. Let's try this squad, and then we'll uh, we'll let you guys go, right? I like Harvest Jack. Something I think it's something about, like, the aesthetics and the Halloween vibe. I'm a dark kind of guy. I like the dark motif, you know? So even though I try to, you know, be positive and stuff, I like my aesthetics. I like them nice and dark. So I like the, uh, I guess, the horror vibe of... Uh, the Halloween vibe, the horror vibe of Mr. Harvest Jack. So, Mortu Macabre is going to smoke me here, but let's see what we can do, right? Let's see 
Now, we can try to steal the stone skin off Morton Macabre, but I think it's easier to... I love that he removes buffs, man. I, I always forget that he also removes buffs on that sheep ability. It's so bonkers, man. Go ahead. Who are you going to kill? Noble? Who's who's Mortu Macabre gonna gonna one shot here? We have a shot of him not one shotting somebody, and that is by applying the true fear right here and having it proc on Mortu Macabre. Let's see if we can get lucky. Let's just keep picking at him, picking at the big fella. Okay, it didn't even proc. We got no power peril proc. It's a miracle, ladies and gentlemen. We're just gonna go in there, chip away at UDK. True Fear procced on a Mithrala, which is great. Keep in mind, True Fear obviously is gonna put their skills on cooldown, right? In addition. Uh, okay, Noble goes in there, gets the job done. Let's go in the A2. Dreams of Ash. Let's come in and stun everybody with Armons. And I guess my only issue with uh, my only issue is just the current meta for honestly for uh, for Harvest uh, Jack. Right, he is. Definitely solid anywhere you can use him in Curse City, right? Uh, he's going to be really dang solid for you. So if you have him and you build him and you can get viability in Curse City out of him, he does a great job just helping you control those waves, especially in that bolster set, right, that we have today. Uh, also, the one area we didn't show him in today's video that he's very well equipped to deal with is obviously, again, Fire Knight. We mentioned it earlier. You could even go with Phantom Touch if you wanted to just to get those hits down, right? Because, you know, finding a triple hitter who also can help you really control those waves along the way to Fire Knight, uh, Harvest Jack can definitely help you out in those areas. So if this... Ah! <laughs> I was actually, I'm going to finish my sentence. I was going to say, if this team ever dies, aka my team, I guess, uh, we can end the video. That was an unfortunate death. Sun Wukong is doing what he does. Maybe I shouldn't have put it on auto, or maybe I was going to lose either way. Either way, guys, I hope you enjoyed this guy to Harvest Jack. Uh, I hope it did a good job just articulating at least how, if not OP, like how unique and, and kind of special this champion is. He's not one of the best in the game, but if you're watching this video because you just pulled him, I think you have a, a really cool, unique champion. Might not be the best, but I think hopefully you'll appreciate him the way that I do. Much love, and as always, take care, guys.